11. Hebrews 6, 16 to 20. To review, for men swear by one greater than themselves, and with them an oath given as a confirmation is an end of every dispute. In the same way, God, desiring even more, to show to the heirs of the promise, Hebrew Christians, promised land, the unchangeableness of his purpose interposed with an oath, that promise begun with Abraham. Hebrews 6.18 so that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we who have taken refuge would have strong encouragement to take hold of the hope set before us. This hope we have as an anchor of the soul, a hope both sure and steadfast, and what one which enters within the veil, where Jesus has entered as a forerunner for us, Having, having become a high priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. I was just making the point. He has to be the first and the last high priest of the order of Melchizedek, because he has a high priest forever. So the order of Melchizedek is forever priesthood. So how can anybody be a priest of the order of Melchizedek and not be forever? Jesus is the first and the last. Just logic. A, Hebrews 6, 16 and 20, Bible study manuals. <clears throat> Looking at 13 and 14, for when God made the promise to Abraham, since he could swear by no one greater, he swore by himself. 6, 14, saying, I will surely bless you, and I will surely multiply you. And along came Isaac. After 25 years, a couple of mistakes along the way. 6, 15, and so having patiently waited, he obtained the promise. Isaac, for men swear by one greater than themselves, and with an oath given as confirmation is an, is an end of every dispute. In the same way, God desiring even more to show to the heirs of the promise the unchangeableness of his purpose interposed with an oath. So that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we who have taken refuge would have strong encouragement to take hold of the hope set before us. 619, this hope we have as an anchor of the soul, a hope both sure and steadfast, and one which enters within the veil, where Jesus has entered as a forerunner for us, having become a high priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. So in Hebrews 6, 13 to 15, it is stipulated, relative to the promise God made to Abraham, that since God, being absolutely sovereign and absolutely trustworthy, could swear to keeping that promise by no one greater than himself, so swore by himself, saying to Abraham, I will surely bless you, and I will surely multiply you, which is a certain guarantee of what God promised to Abraham, with the proviso that Abraham respond with sufficient faithfulness. And following that is a statement in Hebrews 6.15, Referring to Abraham, having patiently waited, he obtained the promise, indicating that at long last, Abraham was sufficiently faithful to obtain the promise in accordance with his volition, albeit in accordance with the sovereign decrees of God, who stipulated just what Abraham would choose to do. For Abraham did have his moments of unfaithfulness. Although Abraham patiently waited for 25 years, wherein he obtained God's promise, that promise was nevertheless not obtained in an actual historical time frame as yet. What seems to be a contradiction, God being who he is, is outside of time and absolutely trustworthy and sovereign, so that when it was indicated that Abraham obtained the promise within Abraham's lifetime after 25 years when Isaac was born, so far as God is concerned, that promise is surely obtained by Abraham in accordance with his sovereign decrees, which will be realized in time. <clears throat> You have to have a whole bunch of generations to go by for Israel to build up to a nation through Abraham, his line. Then according to Hebrews 6.16, which reads as follows. <clears throat> for men swear by one greater than themselves, and with them an oath given as a confirmation is an end of every dispute. 
The verse indicates that individuals swearing by one, i.e. by an authority greater than themselves, settles the matter among fellow men. So much the more the matter is settled when God is involved, which is the point of being made in the three previous verses concluded in Hebrews 6, 17, which reads, in the same way God, desiring even more to show to the heirs of the promise, the unchangeableness of his purpose interposed with an oath. So the heirs to the promise God made and secured with Abraham and his descendants was that much the more secured by God by his oath with himself, by himself, which authenticated the unchangeableness of his purpose as a result of the oath which God interposed intervened between himself and Abraham to ver absolutely verify the reliability of his promise. God being who he is, who is absolutely sovereign and reliable, cannot change. Therefore, what he has promised to Abraham and his descendants will absolutely come to pass. And in God's viewpoint, who is outside of time, it is already obtained by Abraham at the moment he interposed with an oath. It was 6.18. So that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we who have taken refuge who have strong encouragement to take hope of the hope that's set before us. So by two unchangeable things which God did, <clears throat> in other words, make a promise which is unchangeable for God and an oath which is unchangeable for God as well because of who he is, absolutely sovereign, absolute righteousness, immutable, unchangeable, and therefore he cannot lie. Therefore the promise to the believer in this age relative to rewards for that believer's faithfulness is set in stone. <clears throat> therefore believers, those who have trusted alone in Christ alone for eternal life, who thereafter have taken refuge in the sense of refuge in God, i.e. those believers have taken refuge in God to deliver them, what God has promised to fulfill in them, based on the sovereignty, righteous character, and trustworthiness and immutability of God in accordance with the believer's faithfulness. So we believers may receive strong encouragement of God's deliverance of his promise for us because of the, uh, of the trustworthy character of God so that they may take hold of the hope, the sure hope of God's promise to us as particularly applicable to each believer in this church age, the sure hope that he has set before us of his particular promise for each believer as he did long ago with Abraham and the promise God's specifically stipulated for him and his descendants. Note that a careful reading of the epistles of the New Testament will provide insights to such promises particularly applicable to church age believers and how believers may secure the promises that God has made on their behalf through being faithful and thorough, persevering and through persevering in that faithfulness. Note that at first Abraham or Abraham, Abraham, was not entirely faithful to what God had promised through Abraham and Sarah, albeit Abraham finally turned toward God and he thereby obtained the promise, considering how many years did Abraham remain faithful after messing up in the beginning? 25 years, wow. I can't do it for 25 minutes, what he did. Hebrews 6, 16. And so, having patiently waited, he obtained the promise. So that by two in, unchangeable things, in 6.18, in which it is impossible for God to lie, we who have taken refuge would have strong encouragement to take hold of the hope set before us. The writer does not specify what we believers are to take refuge from, but the context makes it clear that he is thinking of their temporal lives in a sinful world that believers should flee from participating in, contributing to the sinfulness of the world, so that they may qualify for reception of all of or part of their particular promise. Let me change that. Or part of their particular promise. Their reward for faithfulness that God in his absolute sovereignty has set aside for each believer to receive based on his plan Grace believer that he has decreed, and yet it will be according to their faithfulness to God. Thus, those believers who have taken such refuge in God, i.e., his absolute promise, an absolute oath, that he swore by himself that he would fulfill 
that promise, that believer will have a strong encouragement to take hold of the hope set before them of receiving temporal blessings and eternal rewards that God has set aside for them. Boy. Persevering in the faith. A tough thing. Pray for me, and I pray for myself, that God enables me to get through these terrible years of beginning older. Hebrews 6.19, this hope we have as an anchor of the soul, a hope both sure and steadfast, and one which enters within the veil. Now the phrase in Hebrews 6.19 rendered this hope, then refers to the sure hope of God's promise of rewards for each believer in this age, the church age, to which promise God swore by himself, which is applicable throughout history for all individuals, that he would absolutely fulfill for each individual, which promise is both sure and steadfast, and one which enters within the veil, i.e., in the sense of entering symbolically the inner sanctuary of the temple, which symbolized the very presence of God, which people in ancient times were not allowed to enter, and to which the author of Hebrews is referring to relative to all individuals throughout history. So the Christian hope is not exhausted by what it sees of earthly possibilities. It reaches into the very presence of God. So let's persevere in the faith. Now the phrase rendered this hope we have as an anchor of the soul speaks of a ship which is anchored and thus it is safe from drifting away. Hence its position and safety are sure. In the same way, the sure hope of the Christian is a stabilizing force for the soul of the Christian, i.e. the person of the Christian and believers of all ages, <clears throat> which absolutely assures him of having that hope of the fulfillment of God's particular promise to him to be realized in accordance with God's decrees, yet in proportion relative to how faithful he is. Mystery to me. How he can get me through this stuff that I want to give up on. 619, this hope we have as an anchor of the soul, a hope both sure and steadfast, and one which enters within the veil where Jesus has entered as a forerunner for us, having become a high priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. The phrase in, he, in Hebrews 619 rendered the, this hope, then refers to the sure hope of God's promise of reward for each believer in this age, the church age, to which promise... God swore by himself, which is applicable throughout history for all individuals, that he would absolutely fulfill for each individual which promise is both sure and steadfast and one which enters within the veil, i.e. in the sense of entering symbolically the inner sanctuary of the tabernacle, which symbolized the very presence of God, which people in ancient times were not allowed to enter into the presence of God, and to which the author of Hebrews is referring to relative to all individuals throughout history in the matter of receiving their promise from God. So the Christian hope is not exhausted by what it sees of earthly possibilities. It reaches into the very presence of God. Whereupon, we're moving on. Hebrews 6, 19 to 20, which reads, which verses read, 6, 19, this hope we have as an anchor of the soul, the sure hope, a hope both sure and steadfast and one which enters within the veil, which, where Jesus has entered as a forerunner for us, having become a high priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek indicating that Jesus entered that inner sanctuary, the tabernacle, indicating that he, his humanity, entered in the presence of God as a forerunner to his own, those who have become believers in him for salvation, and thus have, a, as a result, he was 619, his hope sure and steadfast because of God's, of Jesus being their forerunner, and as a result, will receive God's promise to them, which figuratively enters, includes their entrance into the sanctuary of the tabernacle, to be in the very presence of God. In other words, to be in the presence of God forever and eternity. For he, Jesus Christ, is our high priest forever. And that according to the order of Melchizedek, who is Jesus Christ himself, the only one who qualifies to be a priest according to the, that particular order of priests. So. Here's a review, going back to the excerpt from the Melchizedek study next time.